here with, what's your name? Jeff Berwick. Okay, and I've seen you around YouTube. Uh, can you explain to me what is it that you're known about? Uh, you're known about markets, finance, what gold investing? Well, I started the Dollar Vigilante in 2010, and the tagline is surviving and prospering during and after the dollar collapse. So I talk a lot about how central banking is a scam. Uh, I come from a very anarcho-capitalist perspective, so I talk about uh, we've got to get rid of governments as well. Um, that's really my background, and then I've, I've branched off. I started a show called Anarchast, uh, and now... Yeah, and now I have uh, our conference in Arcapoco going to six year next year with about 3,000 people. So you believe that what? Uh, this is similar to Peter Schiff. I've seen him at the Money Show. Uh, the U.S. economy is really bad today. Although I will agree with that in, to a certain extent, and probably not to the same extent that you do, uh, that the dollar is going to collapse and it's time to get into precious metals, right? And cryptocurrency. Cryptocurrency. So, yeah. does that include like Bitcoin and all the yes. other fellas? Okay. So, here's what I will agree. I think the economy is due for a downturn. Yes. 2020, 2021. But you see this as a dollar collapse. Now, I don't mean to kind of ridicule you, but you guys have been saying dollar collapse for about 10 years now. Well, I started I'm hearing this from Peter Schiff. Yep. 2009, 2010, when I was in high school. Mm -hmm. But as you know, the dollar index has gone from the 70s and 80s, and now it's into the 90s and 100s. So can you explain to me what has happened? Well, I can't speak for Peter Schiff. I actually disagree with him on a number of things, including okay. cryptocurrency. Um, but I started the dollar vigilante in 2010, and I said by the end of this decade, we'll see uh, fiat currencies all start to collapse. Now, I have a year left on that. I could be off by a couple years, but if you really look at the numbers, this system's going down. Um, and, you know, you point out, like, you know, I'm not saying the economy is horrible. Obviously, there's a lot of things happening. That's an economy, right? There's, there's a lot of people in Las Vegas. They're all spending money and all that. But a lot of that's because of all the money printing from the central banks. And that's the thing about money printing that's really funny or kind of interesting is that people feel richer when they print more money. But you eventually get to a point like Venezuela or Zimbabwe or Argentina where the currency hyperinflates and becomes worthless. And that's where we're headed. We have expanded the supply. Yes. Well, you haven't, but the Federal Reserve has. <laughs> that's what I, mean. I don't like the word weed. <laughs> but the Federal Reserve, or whatever system we have, the banks creating credit, yes. has expanded the money supply. Yes. But our inflation rate has been between 3 to 10% every year. And, and I don't think a lot of that inflation is just really central bank. There could be a number of reasons. Uh, there could be lack of construction and housing, which causes prices to go up, corporate consolidation. There's a lot of other factors that causes inflation. So, Well, the main thing that actually causes inflation is money printing. Uh, obviously, prices can rise and they can fall without inflation. Uh, you know, you can have a good economy and, and prices just rise naturally. But what we're seeing is uh, um, uh, money printing that, um, and you pointed out the inflation rate, uh, the U.S. government has their CPI data, which is all lies. And actually, you can't really add up the value of everything in an economy and come up with a number. Like, it's really a BS number. But what they always come up with is about 2 or 3%. And you mentioned 10%. That's a lot closer to the truth. If you actually look at the amount of money printing, it's been about 10% now every year since 2008. So the money supply has actually tripled or quadrupled in the last 10 years. And that's going to speed up because they can't actually s slow down. If they slow down, we'll have something worse than the Great Depression, like times 100. And so we're either going to go into incredibly horrible depression or hyperinflation. So I think we will have economic problems. And first of all, I can say that an economic downturn will be good for parts of the world, U.S. and Las Vegas, because I think we need it. We need Markets do need downturns. Yes. And, and that's the thing about central banks is they try to yes. make it so there's never any downturn. Student loan debt crisis, yes. and we do have a lot of problems. But now, here's a few things I want to get across, though. I have not been into precious metals or those other asset classes you've talked about. I've been in a Nasdaq ETF for several years. I will stay in that Nasdaq ETF long term in the next several years. I will get out at least 
for maybe 10 months, 15 months, because it's due for a downturn. But well, it's funny because if if we enter into hyperinflation, what's the Nasdaq at five thousand or something, right? I cannot see hyperinflation. I, I, I'm sorry, I'm going to have to put this in the air. Well, no, it's it, that's baked in the cake. That's math. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Do some research on money and economics and math. Mm -hmm. It has to happen at a certain point. You can't keep printing money. That's that's what inflation is. Um, so you're in Nasdaq. Yeah, you can see the Nasdaq at fifty thousand in three years. But a Big Mac will cost $100. Well, if we have hyperinflation, this strip economy, isolated in the desert, is going to fail. Lots of things can fail. Yeah. And, and I could see Las Vegas bad. not existing in 20 years. I could see that. Well, but it's possible. Many articles that from the same, similar camp as you were, they said Las Vegas was going to die. But we see Las Vegas is still, once again, one of the most fastest growing city all over the world has been pretty dismal compared to the last two decades. Yeah, I'm no ex Yeah, I'm no expert on Las Vegas. I don't know if it's going to exist 20 years from now, but it's totally possible it might not. But this is one of the things cuz you talk about doom and gloom. Maybe this I'm not. I'm talking about peace and prosperity. Right, but I'm talking about the economy. So I don't see it as a bad thing that this economy and this money system goes down. Right. But I'm, what I'm pointing out is that your economic views, your camp with the same uh, buy gold, the dollar's going to fall. It's kind of different from the camp of the alt-right, the Tucker Carlson's, mm -hmm. the alt-right, these organizations that are talking about mass immigration, demographic collapse. First of all, do you see immigration being in jeopardy because of the economy? I think we can see that. And do you think immigration is problematic, as they say, along with demographics? Well, I'm an, I'm an anarcho-capitalist. I, I don't believe in governments. I believe that we're all human beings. And uh, when you call, say immigration, I just call that traveling. <laughs> and how do we stop people from traveling? Uh, you don't. Uh, so I don't look at it the, that way at all. Uh, there's no immigration issue in my mind. Uh, there is in certain respects. From a status perspective, uh, I can see why it's an issue. But for me, it's just people. And if they want to go somewhere, why are you trying to stop them? Well, that's true, but if you have an economic system and you have a lot of different factors that are used against the American people, then that is a problem. So here in Las Vegas, we have like half of the casino jobs, it seems like, that are done by immigrants, but they're 14% of America's population. And then the other issue is that it affects our schools, and then they're heavily unionized, mm -hmm. and we know that these were the same people that pumped Harry Reid, and all these larger government, let higher tax, less freedom politicians like we have today. So this is part of the problem. We see that immigration is a plot to not only destroy America, but the entire Western world. Yes. And to change our culture. Yes, I agree. The birth rates, as I yep. interviewed Mr. Werrell, and the other thing is we get all these changes of our population, and this is why we see these events like Charlottesville, they may be pissed, but as long as, uh, you know, it's a very complicated question what you're asking. Uh, you're saying it's going to destroy the school systems. Good. The government school systems are horrible. You're like, oh, they're going to overwhelm our welfare system. Good. Get, welfare system sucks. Get rid of all the government and everything's fine. See that you're coming from a status perspective and when you're in that mindset, Everything gets really complicated. It's like, how do we control this or stop this? Just let life happen. And, you know, in general, everything's going to be fine. Yeah. So you're not really panicking. You're pretty no. laid back. And totally I, good. Because your tone is kind of like different from Peter Schiff. Like, yeah. he kind of gets all anxious and nervous, but you just use your words and then people feel it deep down inside. And I kind of <laughs> noticed that. <laughs> but anyway. Uh, we'd like to thank you for having the interview. Oh, and one last thing. Uh, there's a lot of people out there who've done negative videos about you. This is not my word. They say that you guys are uh, selling fear, selling products, pumping this and that. What do you say about that? There are people like Mike Status. There are people like all these individuals out there who created these different YouTube channels debunked you what do you say about that? have I been debunked I haven't seen any of them but uh, I you know when you become uh, popular enough you're always gonna have some detractors so people attack you right uh, what did you say they call me <laughs> the I'm a oh doom and gloomer you say I forget but you said something else
oh, pumping and selling products? Yes, I'm an anarcho-capitalist. I have a financial newsletter. So if you like this information I'm giving to you and you want more, I have a product. And if you'd like to buy it, you can, and I'll give you more information. You don't have to. I'm not ashamed to uh, make some money from what I'm doing. I'm a narco-capitalist. I think everyone should make some money. I hope your YouTube channel makes money. I hope whatever you're doing, it, it might not, but I hope it does. Uh, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. So if, if some people are attacking me saying, oh, he's just making money, well, I'm sorry. That's a good thing. I, I, Oh, well, that's, you know, my my main business is a financial newsletter. If most of my subscribers lose money, I don't have any subscribers anymore. So our subscribers keep growing because they're making money. I've recommended Bitcoin at $3. So. Well, we will share this information with the opposition or the people who disagree. Feel free. Feel free. Uh, and like I said, I will have disagreements with you, sure. with my investments, but I think this is the beautiful part about our society totally. and uh, I think this day of age I think we have one side that has gone too far calling people racist bigots I think that some of us have been called that like Tucker Carlson they don't debate the facts they just like use labeling but anyway thank you so much what's your name again and your uh, organization uh, Jeff Berwick of the Dollar Vigilante and an Arcapoco conference thank you so much great pleasure thank you